start na tayo sa ating lecture. Hello everyone, welcome to our online learning tutorial. At this point, I would like to discuss to you the module 1, lesson 1, and lesson 2. So let's begin with the uh, lesson 1. The lesson 1 is entitled Public Policy in, in General. So ano nga bang public policy? What is public policy? As reflected in your slide, a uh, set of actions the government decides to take when approaching a problem. It is created to resolve a specific issue, created in response to issues, a tool to address societal challenges, and as a result, programs and projects are created. created. So take note, set of actions, which means it involves a series of decisions and that decisions are used by the government to approach the different problems in the society. Now, these decisions are in the form of what? A public policy. Bakit kailangan gumawa ng policy ang government? It is to what? It is to resolve specific issues and challenges of the general public. So, ibig sabihin, may problema. Merong issues na kailangan bigyan ng solusyon. Parang research. Hindi ka pwedeng gumawa ng research pag walang problema. Because the purpose of research is to address a problem and to solve it with your research output. Ganon din sa public policy. Government use public policies in response to the issues and problem of the society. And as a result, sabi niya, programs and projects are created. Nagkakaroon ng mga programa at mga proyekto. For example, since pandemic, what program are you familiar with in which the government provide to address and solve the problem of COVID-19 crisis? Sino sa inyo ang nakatanggap ng mga ayuda? Hindi yung mga ayuda ng mga dilata. Okay? Ang ayuda na sinasabi ko is yung programa mismo ng government na nagbibigay ng mga income, yung mga pera. Diba? Sino sa inyo nakatanggap? Uh, kung ba kayo? Qualified ba kayo? So, are you familiar with this? SAP? Sabi niya, SAP? SAP? Or the Social Amelioration Program? So, familiar kayo doon. Sa tingin nyo ba na yung program na ito, nagawa yun without a public policy? Yung ang provide na lang ba ang government without a public policy? So, hindi. Tama. So, dahil ang SAP ay created based on what? Based on a public policy. What policy? It is the Republic Act 11-469. So, or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act. Okay. Question. Since issues and problems are the basis in making public policies, is these problems come from a single source? So, sa society lang ba ang may problema? Sa inyo lang ba? Sa komunidad? The answer is, no, of course. Bakit? Because of this basis. Contextual basis of public policy. We have here the contextual basis of public policy which includes political, economic, social, and Cultural. Pag sinabi mong political context, pag context ang pinag-usapan natin, ano yung background, ano yung meron doon. Okay? It talks about liberal democracy. So, ano yung mga prob problema sa politika? Ano yung uh, nakikita ninyo? Of course, hindi kayo sasagot. <laughs> diba? <laughs> uh, merong corruption. Tama? Okay? <laughs> uh, imaginary <laughs> sumasagot. So, merong corruption, merong grievances, merong unethical behaviors, political dynasty, and what? Etc. That's why we have different public policies to control. So, problema yun sa politika, merong mga ginawang government para doon. Para i-control. And address these issues in politics like what? Anti-political dynasty law, anti-red tape law, code of ethics, Freedom of Information Act, and etc. So, let's go to economic context. Pag sinabi mong economic context, it talks about market economy. Did you know that the market economy of the Philippines is, is slowly going down? 
Nakikita nyo ba yung uh, epekto ng COVID ngayon? Bakit kaya bumababa ang market economy natin? Why? Because of this pandemic. So, paano nangyari yun? Of course, nagsara ang mga businesses. Limitado ang trading of products. Supplies are decreasing. But the demand is increasing. The value of peso is declining. Stock market prices are going down. Imagine mo that. Pababa ng pababa ang uh, uh, stock, yung price ng mga stocks ngayon, mga shares of stock. Personally, naka-invest ako doon. So, nakikita ko yung kung gaano kababa. Going down, pababa yung trend. Nakakatakot mag-invest. Pero, maganda mag-invest kasi mababa ang presyo nun. So, let's go back. So, how does the government respond? The government legislate public policies like what? Exchange and trade policies, taxation, tariff policies, income distribution policies, Philippine Development Plan. Diba? May mga plano din ang government. The PPP or Public-Private Partnership Policies. And what? Etc. <laughs> Okay, so let's go to social context. Talks about demographics and social conditions. Pag sinabi mong demographics, it talks about the statistical data on a certain population and particular group. So isa ito sa mga basis ng policymakers in creating policies like uh, cash conditional transfer or CCT. Alam nyo ba yung CCT na yun? Siguro ang familiar kayo is yung four piece kasi yun din yun. So, also known as the four piece pantawid pamilya Filipino program another is the K to 12 basic education responsible parenthood and etc <laughs> okay so let's go to cultural context bakit importante or yung basis natin is cultural uh, based on culture in here the national commission on culture and arts is the main agency of the government for what? For culture. So, pinag-usapan dito yung mga problema ng values, ethics, beliefs, and traditions. So, for example, so policies that created based on cultural context include laws on arts and culture under 1987 Constitution, Article 14, and RA-1265 or the Flag Ceremony Cultural Compulsory Act, so part yun, Cultural Properties Preservation Protection Act or the PD-374 and also the Labor Code, part yun, okay? Um, thus, maraming pwedeng panggalingan ng mga issues and problems based on the following context. In this case, papasok dyan ang policy analysis which is used to help Policymakers to choose and decide what problem could be included as a policy agenda. Pag-usapan nyo yan in your subject with Mom Mafel, don't worry. But it is also included in our modules. So, let's proceed to the types of public policies. So, meron tayong apat, regulatory, distributive, redistributive, and constituent. So, pag-regulatory yung pinag-usapan, restrictions and limitations on behavior. Because pag-distributed, nandito na, basahin nyo na, okay? So, pero i-discuss pa rin natin yan. Pag sinabi mong uh, regulatory, we are talking about rules that are intended to what? Limit. Kaya nga sinabi dito, limitations, diba? To limit what? The behavior of a group of people or even the public itself. From work itself, sabi niya, it is to regulate meaning to control something through what through a regulation for example the policy on ECQ pag may ECQ di ba kontrolado lahat ng galaw natin GCQ di ba so traffic rules and etc sa distributed naman is about the cost of goods and services pag, pag pinag-uusapan ang cost of goods and services distributed yan that extend to entire population. This means na yung halaga or presyo ng isang serbisyo, for example, is the education. Kung ang miscellaneous or tuition fee mo is 5,000 or 8,000, 
Then sa lahat ng students ay 5,000. Ganun din. So, it is distributed to all population. The entire population. So, then sa lahat ng students, 5K din or 8K. Mapa kung anong kurso man yan, ganun pa rin. Kung ang graduation fee mo is 800, then lahat ng students ay 800 as long as we are talking about on the cost of any services or goods. When the government extends its cost to the public, whether you are rich or poor, then it is distributive policy. Example of this is the educational policy, as I said, economic policy, fiscal, and tax policies. For the for the next one is redistributive. Ano naman to? It is about the policies that allocates or shares the wealth of one group to another. Group. For example, you are a rich businessman. Wow. You have uh, 20 companies. Of course, you have a great income. Pag ganun ang uh, businesses mo. Tama? So, now that income you are earning will be shared to the group, to the other group, in the form of what? Services. Pero papaano, sir? Through the use of progressive taxation. Example, The graduated income tax. The more your income increases, the higher income tax will be deducted. And the tax from your income will be used and given to other groups in the form of services. For example, mayaman ako. Yung katabi ko, sino bang katabi ko? Oh, itong mantika. Ay, hindi. Bakit may mantika dito? For example, yung katabi ko is may katabi ako. Kunyari, example lang ha is poor. Example lang. Tapos, pag malaki ang kita ko, pareha ba kami ng, ng tax? Siyempre, hindi. Mas malaki sa akin. Kasi mas malaki ang kita ko. Ganon din sa government. Pag kayo nagtrabaho na, pag uh, mas malaki yung kita mo, mas malaki yung tax mo. Kaya redistributive. Kasi yung wealth ng buong group ng mga mayayaman is distributed to other groups. Okay? Kaya tayo nagtatax para may distribute sa ibang mga tao. In the form of what? Goods and services. Last one, the constituent policy. In here, we are pertaining to the rules within the government institutions. It has two types. What? What are the two types? The structural and procedural. Pag sinabi mong structural, it focus on your mandates or functions. Mandates or functions. Uh, including organizational structures of the institution. Kaya may mga policies tayo about human resources, recruitment and selection, and civil service policies. Pag procedural naman, it talks about operations. So pag operations, it pertains to the policies regarding the day-to-day -day processes and procedures in delivering services. Kaya meron tayong mga specific policies for procurement, for consumer protection, and etc. Okay? So, let's proceed to the characteristics of public policy. Um, meron tayo ditong in-identify na lima. So, purposive action means it has a goal and objectives. Ang public policy daw should have a goal and objectives. Patterns of actions. Consists of patterns of actions. Sabi niya, it means it is a process, of course. There is such a cycle. It is the government actually do, not intended or say they are going to do. So, sabi niya, governments actually do. Ito yung talagang ginagawa ng government. Which means it is mandated to them by a law or the constitution itself. Based on law, sabi niya dyan is based on law and it is authoritative. Ayan, yun. Medyo nawala na ako ng focus. So, based on law means the decision is not solely opinions but it may be based on law which is authoritative meaning powerful. Sometimes it may cause of bargaining and compromise. Bakit bargaining and compromise? Because they have what? The control to what policy can be formulated. Since policy maker ka, you have the control of course. Right? So, 
Let's proceed to the approaches to public policy. Medyo mahaba-haba to. Cycle or process-based approach. So, kung babasahin mo, sinasabi dito na ang policy-making DAO has a certain cycle or process from one stimulus to new adapted policy. Yung from one stimulus, ito yung tinatawag natin na it is based from the policy makers to new adapted policy. Pag sinabi mong adapted policy, this is now the output of the policy makers based from their expertise. Now, it has different models. Pag uh, sa system models, policy as a demand or support for the political system, meaning it is needed to be part in the political system of the government. Hindi pwedeng mawala sa proseso ng, ng politics. Sa institutional model naman, uh, sabi niya policy as institutional output. Policy is the main output of the institution. So, kaya tinawag na institutional model. So, when the government operates, policies were created as a result. Ito yung dapat na ma-provide nila as to the administration. Process model. Um, it is telling that the policy is part of the mandates of the government. So, sabi niya doon, political activity. It is one of the political activities of the government aside from their other functions. Last one is the, uh, ay meron pa, dalawa pala. Rational model and incremental. So, sa rational model, uh, it talks about something that benefit the entire population. That's why uh, it serves as maximum social gain. Sabi niya, this is the expectations of the public to be government. Kasi nga, maximum social gain. Dapat ito yung uh, ito yung ina-expect ng ating uh, publiko sa ating mga gobyerno, di ba? So, incremental model. It states that policy is uh, variations on the past. Meaning, it can be adapted or continuing policy based from the previous policies enacted already by the government. Itong mga model na to, mga approaches na to, pag-usapan natin din sa lesson 2. So, let's proceed to the next slide. The policy actor-based approach. Um, in here, it focuses on the actors of policy making process. It, it has also different models. So, kasi sabi niya dito, who controls? So, tinatawag, ang tinutukoy dito is yung mga actors ng policy making process. So, in other words, we are talking about the policy makers. Meron siyang different theories. Sa lesson 2, theories ang pag-uusapan natin. Meron siyang group theory, elite theory, um, public choice theory, game theory, sub government model. So, yung ilan dito, hindi kasali sa lesson 2. So, basahin natin at i-discuss natin. And sa group theory, tells the policy sa group struggle. Meaning, the policies are made not by a single individual but in a group. So, equilibrium is about uh, stability which shows policy must be decided continuously by a group of people towards what? Towards a goal. So, sa elite theory naman, uh, it talks about various elite groups that greatly affects the process of policy making. So, ang nangunguna daw is mga elite, mga yayamang, mayayamang tao, mga individual. So, sa public choice theory, it tells that not only policy makers shall be involved in the process, but also for self-interested individuals like you, or me, or the public itself. So, hindi lang dapat mga pa policy makers. Sabi ng public choice, tayo din daw mga individual. Dapat isali. So, sa game theory, talks about rational choice in competitive situations, meaning policies undergoes different deliberations before it is being authorized. Sub-government model, it states that policy are made by different highest point of group in the Congress, administrative and special interest group. So, yun yung uh, mga models natin in terms of this approach, policy act or approach. As I end, meron tayong activity for this lesson. Ito yung activity natin. This is the end of the lesson 1. 
Yan. So, at the end of this lesson, ito yung activity ninyo. Provide five specific examples of uh, regulatory policy that exists in the province of La Union and discuss each policy according to its objectives and functionality. Nandun din dito yung uh, sa modules nyo, sa lesson 1, ito rin yung activity ninyo. So, didigan mo, madali lang siya. Mag-identify ka lang ng ibang mga regulatory policy. Diniscuss natin kung anong regulatory. Okay? So, hindi distributive ha? Hindi, ano, constituent. Okay. Tinutukoy natin is regulatory policy. So, this is 20 points. Uh, make it brief but substantive. Okay? Let's proceed to the lesson 2 para mabilis tayo. Isang video na lang. Yeah? So, lesson 2 talks about theories and models of public policy. Uh, bago yan, uh, relax mo na. Dali. <laughs> Nawawalan na ako ng bosses. Okay. <clears throat> Theories and Models of Public Policy. Meron tayong anim na theories and meron tayong tatlong uh, model. So, meron tayong elite, group, system, institutional, incremental, rational choice, bounded rationality, garbage can, and multiple streams model. So, let's start with elite theory. So, sa elite theory, sabi niya, public policy is ruled by elite. Pag sinabi mong elite, ito yung mga mayamang tao, yung may kaya, okay? So, public policy daw, sila yung mas, ang mga elite daw ang mas nangunguna, mas nakakataas kaysa sa mga policy makers. Parang sila yung decision maker na, hindi na yung mga policy makers natin. So, yun yung elite theory. Elite group, ano yung mga consist of elite group? Ano yung parts niya? Meron tayong governing and merong non-governing. Pag sinabi mong governing, Ito yung mga tao, mga mayamang tao na nasa gobyerno mismo. Sila yung mga policy makers mismo. Sila yung mga elite mismo. Non-governing non -governing is yung mga elite groups na nasa business, nasa private businesses. So, pag nagsama yan, nako, di ba? Sabi niya, it is ruled by elite. Mahirap. So, kahit anong sabihin natin, pag sila nag-decision, tayong magagawa. So, elite possess skills. So, meron daw mga skills to. Siyempre, mga yaman eh. So, mga elite material wealth and intelligence. So, public policy is not the demand of, public, of the public, but rather the prevailing demand of the elite. So, sabi ng elite theory na ito is nababaliwala na tayo. Okay? Mas nag-pre-prevail or mas nangunguna yung demand ng mga elite. So, let's proceed to group theory. Public policy is what? Product of group struggle. Pag sinabi mong group struggle, this means that there are various groups who are involved in the public policy making. It is made by a small group of people only but um, rather the different groups in the society. It is not made by a small group of people, ha? pero it is made by different groups. Hindi lang isang group, hindi different groups. Kaya ang sinawag na group struggle. So, groups in society tries to influence public policy. This means that there are interactions among what? Among the groups which is a critical part in politics. The ability to tilt public policy depends on the number of groups factors. Anong ibig sabihin nito? Kung sinong mas maraming pera, kung sinong mas madaming skills, mas maraming connection, ito, sabi niya, access to decision makers. Malaki yung influensya nila sa paggawa ng public policy. Kayang-kaya nilang baguhin ang public policy. Imagine that hindi na proseso ng batas ang mangingibabaw, hindi palakasan na to. Ganun ang sinasabi ng group theory. Payamanan na, padamihan ng kakayahan at koneksyon. Yan ang group theory. So, 
next uh, theory natin is system uh, systems theory so public policy is a political system so political system what does it mean it means that ang public policy is a part of the procedures or processes within the context of politics so that's why public policies are the output of this political systems kami niya output of political system meaning system theory is telling that public policies are what the laws the rules and the judicial decisions okay let's go to the institutional theory sabi ng institutional theory public policy is formulated by government institutions ano yung mga government institutions natin Meron tayong legislatures, executives, and the judiciary. So, unti-unting nare-reveal yung mga actors of public policy natin. 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 So, uh, government institutions have formal structures. So, itong mga uh, in-include dito na institutions, merong formal structure, legal powers, procedural, rules, and functions. Kaya tinawag na institutional kasi based from it work from the word institution. Public policies are formulated by these institutions. That is institutional theory. So, na yan. Incremental theory naman tayo. Sabi ng incremental theory, public policy is the output of different policy alternatives. So, may mga existence of policy alternatives pag pinag-usapan natin kanina, di ba? <clears throat> Meron ding limitations on changes made by policy makers. Policy makers consider past policies. So, they consider daw. So, tinitignan pa nila. And provide limited changes from it, then legislate it to become a new public policy. Imagine that. Sabi niya, uh, they consider public uh, past policies. So, parang it is to amend, mga ganun. So, Thus, what this mean? Um, thus, the existence of policy alternatives and consideration of uh, past policies are involved in the policy, public policy making. So, ayun, yung incremental theory. So, rational choice theory. Ito naman yung opposite nito. Uh, incremental so, rational choice theory aims to improve the policy-making process, construct of better public policies, adoption of good policy, and it is the opposite of incrementalism. Why opposite? Kasi what? Sa incrementalism kanina, it considers it considered past policies and limited changes. But in here, in rational choice, it aims to what? It aims to improve policy-making process. So, what does it mean? To adapt and construct better public policies. Policies. So, kasama na yun. Yung sa, sa goal ng rational choice theory is to construct and adapt good and better public policies. So, it means that a new and improved public policies will be formulated. Hindi lang yung in lang natin sa past policies. Tapos, konti lang ang binago natin. Diba? Tignan, na, tignan mo yung mga policies na amended. Repealed. Abolish. Or, uh, tapos, pinalitan lang ng uh, konting parte ng batas. Imagine that. Wala namang nangyari. Marami, maraming ganun mga batas. Um, amended by Republic Act. See? Bakit kaya naamin ang mga batas? Because of its ineffectivity. So, disobedient pa rin ang mga tao, right? Kahit naamin na. Kahit ini-improve na. So, sa pag improve ito yung rational choice theory. Let's go to bounded rationality model. Sa mga model na tayo. Knowledge and information of... Uh, sa bounded rationality, knowledge and information of policy makers are... Limited preferences are more difficult to pin down. So, sa kanina, limited daw ang knowledge and information. That's why kaya tinawag na bounded from the word itself. 
merong boundary, merong limitation with regards to knowledge and information. Kaya sabi niya doon, preferences are more difficult to pin down. Hindi mo lang, um, bakit kaya? Hindi mo lang kung ano, ano ba talaga ang uh, decision nila. Hindi mo alam kung ano ba talaga ang decision nila. Kaya ang uh, nangyayari, implementing policy decisions became more problematic. So, mas nagiging problema pa. So, preferences. Consequently, policymakers' intention to create public policy is bounded or confined. Meaning, nakatoon lang sa nakatoon lang sila sa isang goal. So, titignan mo dito, kaya tinawag na more difficult to pin down. Tsaka yung preferences nila is isa. In which it leads to what? Biases, biases in attention, and what? Selection. So, ito, tanggalin natin ito. Uh, Andalay, tignan natin yung one. Kasi na ulit ito, hindi na alis. Ayan. Preferences are more difficult to pin down. Hanggang doon lang, ipin natin. Ayan. Sa kwento, sa <laughs> rational choice. Okay? Baka malito kayo. Hindi na natanggal. So, that's it. Yung garbage can model naman tayo. Sa garbage can model, garbage can represents the problems and solutions. So, in various types, sabi niya dito. So, maraming klase ng solutions and problems. Like what? It depends on its source, right? So, all garbage uh, produced will be collected at a time. Once collected, the decision is whether to keep it or remove it from, from the process. This model aims to provide an opportunity for, for choice. Ano yung sabihin nun? So, once it, it, is, uh, it is collected, policymakers will have the opportunity, opportunity to choose what garbage, garbage talaga yung ginamit, no? What garbage will they pick? Ano ba yung mga garbage problems and solutions? Ano daw yung ipipick nila? Ano yung uh, pipili nila? Whether to keep it or to remove it. Uh, bakit ba nila ikikip? Saan nila gagamitin? Gagamitin nila sa policy making. Gagamitin nila as, kasi problem siya and solution siya, lalagay nila sa Ah, uh, agenda. Ko consider nila as agenda. Since ang uh, may procedure tayo sa public policy making, part of it is the agenda setting. So they will uh, uh, collect all garbage, ano ba yung mga garbage na yan? problems and solutions in various types. So they will pick, they will uh, have the opportunity to, cho to choose. And then, they will use it to form an agenda. So, yun ang garbage can model. So, let's proceed to the multiple streams model. Sa multiple streams model, mayroong tatlong streams. Kaya ang sinabing streams. Okay? First, second, and third. May problem, policies, and policy. Politics. Okay, magkaiba yun. Policy sa politics. So, according to this model by John Kingdon, these streams represents how public policies are made and being influenced. And merely, he considers that these streams are crucial okay, in influencing the process, especially in agenda setting. So, crucial daw siya sa proseso ng paggawa ng public policy, especially in agenda setting. Nakikita nyo ba? So, ayan. So, as I end, remember that these theories, yung mga pinag-usapan natin, and models are greatly helped in interpreting the process of policy making, not only in our country, hindi lang dito sa Pilipinas, but also in the world. These theories are being used by various groups to convey their insights 
pertaining to the policy making process okay so for your activity in this lesson 2 here it is uh, of so many problems in the country that policy makers can provide sa dinami dami ng mga problema sa bansa na pwedeng i-provide ng mga policy makers natin why are some problems given more importance? Bakit daw mas binibigyan pansin? Bakit mas uh, um, uh, importante yung isang problema kaysa sa mga iba? Bakit yung iba is simply fade away? Sinabi mong simply fade away, hindi na na-include as agenda. Bakit kaya? So explain it in five sentences only. So very brief siya. So, minsan kasi pag mga essay natin, <laughs> padamihan ng mga susulat, wala na yung uh, sense ng, ng essay. Yung parang wala na yung sense of, uh, yung point mo wala na doon. So, make it short. Explain in five sentence, pero dapat substantial. Dapat, merong uh, makikita mo doon yung point mo and yung uh, conviction mo, okay? in justification mo I need. So, yun lang. And I hope you've learned for this lesson 1 and lesson 2. Medyo nawawalin ako ng bosses, pero still, you can do it. And uh, if you have any questions with this uh, lesson 1 and lesson 2 in public policy, uh, you can uh, contact me in my number as, uh, as I have posted in our GC. So, yun lang. And see you next lesson. See you next.